you might not be able to eat, but you can drink. 15 intermittent fasting drinks with massive benefits. Here's my favorite 15. I do this almost every single day. There's some dirty fasting in here. I'm gonna explain what that is. Number 15 is my absolute favorite, of course, but we're gonna go through, break these down. I'm gonna give you the science behind it. Let's go, 15 drinks. Number one, out of the gates, very obvious, but water. Drinking water, absolutely essential for regulating your body's temperature, keeping the joints lubricated, preventing infections, delivering nutrients into the cells, and then just keeping your organs functioning properly. Water, half your body weight in ounces per day. When you're hungry and you're fasting, put water in. A lot of times it'll go away. You're actually not hungry, you're more thirsty. You will be a little bit hungry with fasting, but absolutely essential that you get a lot of this in. Which rolls right into number two, to enjoy that flavor a little bit more, do infused water. You can absolutely get a container that infuses it for you or just throw a bunch of cucumbers in the water the night before. That's one of my favorites. A lot of benefits with those. You get a little bit of extra weight benefits and just drinking 11 cups of water if it's the infusion that gives you a little bit extra flavor to do it per day for a woman, 16 cups per day for a man. Drinking that much hydration will help you to improve your mood and your sleep quality, let alone enhance the body's flushing and detoxification effects of intermittent fasting. Number three, mineral water. The big knock on fasting is that as you lower your insulin levels down and you don't eat, you also have to make up some ground with all the minerals in your body balancing the fluid of your blood, let alone supporting your detoxifiers, liver, kidneys, and so you lose a lot of minerals. Putting minerals back in and finding ways to put them in are important. Mineral water could add to those electrolytes. More on that in a little bit. Sparkling water. A study showed that 18 postmenopausal women that drank a sodium-rich carbonated water decreased their inflammation markers, lowered their LDL, the so-called bad cholesterol, and their blood sugar while simultaneously enhancing their HDL, their good cholesterol. Also, those that drank carbonated water had an estimated 35% lower risk of developing heart disease within the next 10 years. I don't think you should overdo it. You wanna make sure that it's clean. One of my favorites is Spindrift. You wanna make sure you know where the natural flavors come from, if those are in there. No other additives, but sparkling water to keep you from eating might be the way to get you through just to quench that little urge you might have. Number five, one of my favorites, coffee. That's my mug for the day, extra sized of it. Organic coffee, no pesticides, ton of health benefits. Increases your metabolic rate, speaking of fasting, three to 11%. That means you're burning more fat, especially if you don't put in the additives or the sugars uh, or everything else that we end up putting in our coffee. Studies also show drinking coffee can reduce your risk of diabetes from anywhere from 23 all the way up to 50%. Coffee has been shown to protect against Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, certain types of cancers, depression, heart disease, and strokes. So this is our number one source of antioxidants for most people, because we don't to eat enough fruits and vegetables. But when you are fasting, this may, may be the way to go. It really helps curb the appetite, it flushes out the digestive system, it has those protective benefits, and it will make you feel a bit more full. My favorite, the one I'm drinking today is a DLG coffee where I go a little bit, a little dirty fasting this morning at the time of recording this for you. Coffee, healthy fat, coconut oil, healthy fat, butter, and then I do a little bit of collagen in there. I'm gonna talk about those other additives, but this latte mix, brain fuel, fat burning drink is going to help me not have to eat until tonight. And so I might as well do that, even if it's a little bit of dirty fasting and I don't get the full cleanup autophagy effect of doing a pure water fast, I'm still in very low sugar, fat burning mode, coffee. Speaking of coffee, let's talk cream. If you have a full fat cream, half and half, I'm not gonna beat you up over doing that. The hardcore autophagy, intermittent fasters will, but 
put a little bit of cream in there. I would stay away from milk as you start to drift into whole milk, 2%, 1% skim, you're adding in a lot of sugar. So you're gonna get that insulin spike, which is really gonna work against your fat burning. Also, I would probably avoid almonds, almond milks, even a cashew milk, just because those are tend to be heavily processed, especially almonds, to get that nut to a milk form. You're gonna end up running into a lot of potential sugars, potential additives, and some of you have sensitivities to those nuts to begin with, so drinking and eating a lot of them can surge that sensitivity a little bit. Coconut, especially the full fat coconut milk, would be an option for you as well. Number seven, if you're not a coffee lover, you could go tea. Green tea, black tea is gonna have that caffeine benefit. Also fat burning, especially green tea, a lot of research on its enhancement of burning fat in your body, which is why a lot of people are doing intermittent fasting. And you may find another herbal tea that you like as well. If that suffices, kind of quenches the urge of wanting to eat or getting through the fasting or just making you not really think about food, it makes the fasting a bit more enjoyable, at least for me it does. So sometimes even in the afternoon, I will oftentimes skip breakfast and lunch. In the afternoon, I'll grab a tea because it kind of quenches that urge and then I make it later in the day and I have a longer fasting window. So herbal teas, black teas, or the weight loss enhancing green tea. Just don't add any sugars or other additives to it. Number eight, you down with ACV? Yeah, you know me. ACV straight up or diluted in water. One to two tablespoons of this mixed into water can be as effective as a diabetes drug shows some studies. So it's gonna lower the insulin level. It's gonna put you into fat burning mode. It's also going to help keep you hydrated and it prevents cravings. Now, doing that every single day, multiple times a day, probably don't recommend that long-term, but if you're in a period of time where you're wanting to reset or uh, you know, maybe a month or two, we were going pretty hardcore at this, or as a rebound from maybe a weekend where you were off the fasting and you were feasting, putting in some apple cider vinegar, getting that insulin back under control and swinging you back the other direction, ACV. Number nine, now this is a dirty fasting concept. Dirty fasting just refers to that you might be taking in a few calories, but you're still keeping it really low and you're not putting in sugar. So healthy, Fats. Yes, you can drink those. As I just said, in my coffee, I have uh, an MCT oil. Just This is just in the form of coconut oil, but those medium chain triglycerides are incredibly fat burning and they fuel the brain. They also fuel ketone production in your body. You could use ghee, which would be a reduced form of butter. Uh, straight up coconut oil, uh, straight up butter I like to use and mix it in. And what it does is it creates a creaminess for my coffee in the form of a latte. So just makes it a lot more enjoyable. Oils technically break a hardcore fast, but they don't put you or break the ketosis factor. So just putting in fat, you're staying in fat burning mode. If you wanna burn fat, you gotta eat fat, right? And you can hold yourself over in between meals longer by using that. So if you have to go that route, I'm all for it from a doctor's position to keep you in fasting, to keep you from more feasting and over consuming, add some healthy fats in, makes it a bit more delicious, and you're getting a lot of benefits, fat burning mode and brain wise. Number 10, bone broth. Bone broth can be purchased, you gotta watch just regular broth, that's fine, but you're not gonna get as much benefit as if you made your own. I have videos on this channel about making your own or on drlivinggood.com. And you can steep the nutrients, the minerals, the salts, and the collagen and the benefits out of the bone marrow of specific bones. So from animals, you get them from the butcher, you steep it, you can add in your favorite flavorings, but this is a good way to replenish nutrients while fasting, replenish electrolytes while fasting. We're gonna talk more about that. And you can last longer periods of time in your fasting window when you're only you know, focused on drinking water primarily. That might be a liquid that just might suffice to say, you know what, I'm able to go an extra long period of time that way. So bone broth, make your own, add it in, ton of benefits to it. Number 11, you might not be drinking a lot of, but I put in fish oil. And I think this is so important because inflammation is a massive, massive problem. And while you're lowering insulin, why not take care of its other eye counterpart, which is inflammation. 
Putting in fish oil is a great way to enhance EPA, DHA, and the omega-3 fighters that lower inflammation in your body. So then not only are you losing the weight, but you are enhancing your joints and there's very few calories involved with it. There's no digestible carbs that need to be taken in. So I stay on my supplementation such as vitamin D and omegas while I'm fasting so I can keep my immune system up. It doesn't compromise my insulin and my fat burning mode and I can address inflammation all at once. Fish oil, add it in. Number 12, collagen. You lose it as you age, it protects your joints, it builds the connective tissue in your body, it repairs your gut. What better time to be in repairing mode when you don't have a lot of other food competing? When the digestive system is relatively calm, put in the healing agent of collagen to help repair it and it helps a lot of immune related issues, autoimmune related issues. So a good time to add this in. Pure collagen might throw you out of autophagy, which is the cleanup process of your body when there's no food present, but it will not alter your ketosis. You'll stay in fat burning mode. So I add it right to my coffee. You could do unflavored, mine is sweetened with monk fruit, which is gonna have very minimal impact on that insulin. It's all about staying in that fat burning mode. Again, it's a bit of dirty fasting, but when you have a longer window of not eating, the benefits outweigh any negatives. Number 13, let's flip it on its head for number lucky number 13. What can't you have? There's no sodas, even Zevias, avoiding alcohol, avoiding coconut water, even though it has electrolytes in it, these things increase the sugar levels that you're taking in. So I would avoid those drinks, Gatorades, uh, you know, any kind of bottled drink in that regard. Avoiding those, it's just all about spiking your insulin levels. Fats don't do it, coffee doesn't do it, broth doesn't do it, tea doesn't do it. As long as you're avoiding anything with that spiking of insulin, you're gonna stay in a fat burning mode, which is one of the primary goals of intermittent fasting. So something to potentially add in, you do want to avoid juices. Most every juice is going to be very hard on the carbohydrates unless it's a really not fun tasting green juice. That's still going to be adding seven to 10 grams of carbs. So avoiding those, you may try a greens powder potentially would be okay. I do do that while I'm fasting just to get nutrients in to keep myself from any kind of deprivation. Uh, I add in a scoop of it, usually sweetened with monk fruit to keep the nutrients in to get a lot of vegetables when I'm going a longer period of time without eating. Uh, but most of the time you're avoiding other juices, maybe some celery juice in the morning if you wanted to. We just don't want to get it too sugary. That's definitely going to be dirty fasting, but there is strong research out of UCLA showing that if you just do 50 calorie or less green juice all day, every day, three days in a row, if you stayed below that point, you would get some massive immune system benefits and still experience autophagy. So green juice, got to be very low carbohydrate. I would stick with probably a greens powder in that regard. There is one in the description if you want to see the one that I use to keep probiotics, enzymes, and a lot of fruits and vegetables coming in without that insulin spike going on. Number 15, this one might be the most important piece. I believe it's an absolute must if you are fasting electrolytes. Electrolytes have to go in. We can't get it through Gatorade, too much sugar. We don't wanna be doing diet products and other additives coming in, so we need to get electrolytes in. Salt is one way to do it. You can add it to your water. Um, and the reason this so, is so important is when it's, you are in a fasting state, most people's body enter into that ketosis. You're really burning off the fat. During that transition, the body flushes a lot of fluids and electrolytes from the system as it metabolizes the sugar that's been stored up in your liver and your muscles. So as that transition is happening, there's a big shift of the amount of insulin in the blood going down, minerals start flushing into your blood vessels, and there's a lot of burning of excess sugar that's been stored inside of your body, electrolytes have to balance all of that out. So it's an absolute must to get them in. If you're experiencing coldness while fasting, if you're experiencing any kind of cramping, sleep disruption, you gotta get electrolytes in. I think it's an absolute must for anyone going through intermittent fasting. I put the electrolytes I use um, from a quality sea salt to be putting them in that still tastes good and aren't gonna spike your insulin levels because they're sweetened with either a monk fruit or a stevia. Those are in the description. So make sure you're using electrolytes. 15 drinks that you can be getting in in order to enhance your fasting experience 
get you through for a few more hours, keeping the nutrients in without breaking you out of fat burning mode. Of course, water is the ultimate to achieve autophagy, which is the cleanup and recycling system of the body. But applaud you for doing the fasting. You can do it and those 15 drinks will help you through it. If you feel at all like you have plateaued doing fasting in the past, have failed at it, or maybe never started it, I created a video breaking down myself going through 12 weeks of rotational fasting, which smashes the plateauing and also gradually fixes your metabolism so you're not shocking the system. And I put that video right here for you so you can get an introduction, see the life-changing results that it's done for me, which is why I'm such a big advocate of fasting and help you get started. Check that video out right here.